Praise the Lord. This is the teaching that he has given me to teach today on the body of Christ. This is important for these end day times. We need to listen to what our responsibilities are in the body of Christ. You know, we're not lone, uh, lone wolves out there doing our thing. We are supposed to be sheep into and coming into the body of Christ. So, Father, in the name of Yeshua, I ask you to bless this video and this teaching. Bring it to people that need it. And those that want to receive it, bless them and let them fill their life with your glory and your righteousness. That we can do your holy will, not ours. This is about you and your glory and, and what you are doing for us. Let us realize this. When we have received a minister ministry from you it's not ours it is yours and it is for the edification of the body let us understand this and quit glorifying in our own selves father forgive us let us repent today and fall on our knees put that conviction within our hearts in the name of yeshua hamashiach amen okay today um, in Ephesians <laughs> chapter 4 on verse 12 you'll find out there is five offices of ministry held within the body apostles prophets evangelists pastors and teachers these are the five offices that are given to human beings to fulfill the ministry in the body of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ. And there are nine gifts given to the body. The word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, faith, gifts of healing, working of miracles, I... Um, Prophecy, divisions of uh, discernment of spirits, and this is very important. Everybody needs it, that, the discernment of spirit. Because too many people fall into false spirits and false teachings. Uh, diverse kinds of tongues, that speaking in tongues, and the interpretation of tongues. And you'll find this in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and beginning at the 12th verse of the divisions of the Spirit. So there's five ministries and nine gifts to, to uh, edify the body, not ourselves, but the body of Christ, which if we're part of that body, we need these five ministries and nine gifts to help us grow. Not one person has them all. That's the reason why they're given out throughout the body. <clears throat> so, I was moved to come over here to Romans chapter 12. It says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercy of God, that ye present your bodies as a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. So we are to present our bodies as a living, living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. So, <clears throat> we are to give our bodies over to Him to place in the body of Yeshua according to His will and purpose. Two, and be not confirmed to this world. 
In other words, come out of the world and the worldly doctrines and beliefs. But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and, and perf perfect will of God. <clears throat> so we, we need to come out of this worldly thinking, out of this dogma of religion and, and the worldly things that have indoctrinated into the church and trying to indoctrinate into the body of Christ. That's why we have to make our bodies a living sacrifice. For I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. <clears throat> okay. God has called me as a prophet. He also called me as an evangelist. That's, that's what I would do. I would go out and and hold revivals uh, when I we go out into uh, the bike rallies and I'm not talking about Christian bike rallies I'm talking about the worldly bike rallies and we're handing out Bibles and pamphlets and speaking and 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 teaching and loving these men that are in the world and these young ladies that are in the world that are in a motorcycle club uh, I mean I, I don't care who they are banditos hell's angels uh, uh, there's so many of them out there but see we minister to all of them they have souls and that's what evangelists do and then he also uses me as a prophet because he shows me some things many times. And that's what he called me when, when I was seven and Jesus come and stood by me and he said I would be one of his last day prophets. Not the only one, you know. There are others out there that are really, really serving him and not glorifying themselves because I'm not nothing. That's seven years old. How I mean, good grief. I didn't even hardly know the Lord. I mean, I had come acquainted with Him, and I was reading, beginning to try to read the Bible because I couldn't read well because I have dyslexia. So He taught me how to read through reading the Bible Himself up in the hay barn. I would take my Bible, and I'd go out into the barn, and I'd crawl up top because we would have hay up there in top of the the barn and we would you know kind of we kick down to to the horses down below to eat and to the uh, to the cows <clears throat> that we milked because we had milk cows <clears throat> and so I would go up there alone and I would open the scriptures and that's how I learned to read I know when I was going to college one of my professors says, you know, you, you write a lot of things like the Bible. And I explained to her how I learned how to read. And she says, then that's how, that's how, why you, you write like they did back there. Because that's how you was taught to read. I went, oh, okay. But she liked it. I mean, Needed to say, I was made A's in her class. <laughs> I love, I love that woman, you know. <laughs> but anyway, <clears throat> this is how I was taught. And at seven, I was told I was to be a prophet. Well, that used to bother me a lot growing up and in, in my teenage years and things. It was like, 
why can't I just be normal? Why can't I be just like any of the other teenagers out there? Why do I have to know that if I go out and do this or that, it's sin, it's wrong? Um, and why, every time I start to go out and do something, you always re remind me, no, 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 Barbara, you can't do that. I've called and chose you for a purpose, and I'm going... There's sometimes I would go out there in the same hay barn and I'd be praying and seeking Him and I'd say, you know, Father, I didn't ask for this. I didn't want it. You come and you call me at seven years old. I, I want to be like all the rest of the kids. I want to, I want to do what they do. And, and he wouldn't let me. I mean, he absolutely would not let me. Period. And now that I'm older and over those flights of fantasies, <laughs> uh, I'm glad that he kept me from it, protected me. It always didn't seem fair to me at that time, but you know what? I understand now why he called me to be a prophet. And he didn't call me to talk about doomsday, how the world's going to end all the time. We know how that's going to happen because it's in the scriptures. It's already been prophesied. What he's called me to do is an evangelist prophet telling you, you need to get right you need to accept Him, Yeshua. For John 3.16 makes it very plain. God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believe in Him should not perish. This has been given me to tell you as part of the body of Christ come out of the world. You have to come out of the world. Like I was not permitted to take part in those things that the other teenagers was taking part of. You know, going out and getting drunk and having parties out there and and stuff. And, and, and being the oddball person out where even a girl, you know... Would, came up at the beginning of a class and slapped me and made fun of me and slapped me again, you know, and I, you know, turned the other cheek thing and, you know, they, you know, I have always been ridiculed and made fun of all my life because of the belief in Jesus Christ. But I had to stand firm. Was it easy? No. And when you're young, there's sometimes you just, you really do want to rebel. And there's some young ones out there that's being called by his name for the same purpose of reaching out to those kids out there. See, there was some that finally come to the Lord because of my stand for him. And it wasn't really my stand, it was his stand because he was just using this body as a vessel. And the very girl that slapped me that morning finally started going to my daddy's church. She got saved, and, and she often said, If you had not a took that stand and turned the other cheek, I would have never believed you. So sometimes when we are humiliated by the world, it is shining his light to you. To be saved. So the important thing I can say as a prophet. That Jesus Yeshua truly came. He truly died. He truly bled. And that blood is a covenant. And this is one of the main things that he keeps speaking to me to tell the people. You remember the covenant that he made with Abraham. Isaac. Jacob, Israel, 
the covenant he made with Israel on Mount Sinai he has made with us mankind human beings on this earth through the blood and the sacrifice of Jesus Christ Yeshua so we are under a blood covenant and we need to learn that we think the old things of the Bible are done totally away with covenants have not been done away with you must understand that you must understand when you walk into that blessed gift of Jesus Christ you're walking into and under a covenant a blood covenant between you and God himself through the blood of Yeshua HaMashiach Jesus Christ that paid that blood sacrifice who become that Lamb of God to be sacrificed for you and me for all human beings now you have to accept it that's what I'm prophesying to you right now you have to accept it if you don't if you don't then you will be held accountable for every sin that you have done and would have done and outside of him you will do let's go on for as we have many members in one body see in that blood covenant we're coming into a a one body there are many members but one body and it's through the covenant the blood of Yeshua Jesus Christ that does this and all members have not the same office we don't have the same office everybody isn't an apostle everybody isn't a prophet everybody isn't an evangelist everybody isn't a pre preacher and everybody is not a teacher they are set aside members who have been called out for certain ministries in the body of Christ. That's the reason why when you are called as an apostle, you are to do the work as an apostle. Go study it. Learn out what you're called. If you are a prophet, called out to be a prophet, go study what your office this ministry is about and fulfill in the perfect righteousness of him not getting puffed up and thinking you're more than anybody else you're not you're just one of the five ministries in the body of Christ if you're called to be an evangelist study that ministry and do that work if you're a pastor study who you are and do that work in love in mercy if you're a teacher teach teach his true word out of the scriptures out of the word of God not going off teaching everything and anything but teaching each ministry must become come responsible for the ministry that he has called you into and he didn't call you into this ministry giving it to you to glorify yourself and put yourself above other people but you are to be humble meek and a servant of the body when you're called into a ministry you become a servant to minister in that ministry to the others okay let's go on so we being many are one body in Christ and every one member one of another 
So we're all, every one members one of the other. Having the gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, whether prophecy, let us prophesy, according to the portion of faith. That's getting into the nine gifts. Wisdom, knowledge, faith, healing, miracles, prophecy, discerning of spirits, tongues, and the interpretation of tongues. These gifts are given according to the grace that is given to us. So, if you are got the gift of prophecy, well, let us prophesy according to the portion of faith, our ministry. Let us wait on our ministering, or he that teaches on teaching. We need, we need to wait on him. Don't get so excited and start just going off on your own and doing your own thing. You have to do it through him. For he is the giver of the ministries. And the Spirit, the Ruh Kadesh, is the one that has been assigned to give us the gifts. Are he that exhorts on exhortation, he that giveth, let him do it with simplicity. Let's don't get all radical and going off and saying stuff that isn't even part of the body of Christ. He that giveth, let him do it with simplicity. He that ruleth with diligence. He that showeth mercy with cheerfulness. So when we're ministering and using the gifts that are given to us, we are to minister in mercy and with cheerfulness. Let love be without diminish. Ab abhor that which is evil. Cleave to that which is good. When people are coming in and saying they're part of the ministry and they have these, these ministries, they're, they're saying, I'm an apostle, or I'm a prophet, or I'm an evangelist, or I'm a pastor, or I'm a teacher, and I have all these gifts. Watch them. What kind of fruit are they producing? Are they gloating about their ministry, saying that they are the only one? Are they being puffed up and putting their self first, that you have to listen to them and only them? No. Let love be without diminish and abhorred that which is evil, cleave to that which is good. Be kindly effective, affectionate one to another with brotherly love in honor, per, perfecting one another. So if you see somebody that claims to be a minister of God and is either apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher, and they're speaking in hate and praying out curses on people, they're not a minister of God. They're not. Simple. It says so. Be kindly effective one to another with brotherly love. If you are praying curses on people, you don't have brotherly love. You have hate. And that is not love. And that's not of God. We have to learn to honor each other. Honor them because they're the part, a part of the body. And we have to build them up. 11. Not slowful in business, fervent in spirit, and serving the Lord. Rejoice in hope, patient in tribulations. Continuousing 
instruction in prayer, distributing to the necessity of saints, giving to hospitality. How many that says they're part of the ministry and they have, you know, one of these ministries or more than one and and they claim to have gifts and all of this stuff, but they're not distributing that love and that building up and that edification of the body and giving hospitality to them. Bless them which persecute you. Bless and not curse. Rejoice with them that do rejoice. Weep with them that weep. That's what the ministry, ministry is all about. And the gifts of the Spirit. Be of the same mind one to, towards another. Mind not high things, but consider consideration to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own concerts. C-O-N-C-E-I-T-S. We don't, we, do, we can't be wise in our own thoughts, our own things. Only in Him. Res, respect to no man, evil for evil. Prove things honest in the sight of all men. We cannot render evil to evil. When people come up against you with evil, you cannot render evil to them also. And there's many that do that. If it be possible as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. When I come up against somebody's teaching, I do so because they are hindering the body of Christ. They are bringing false parables, false teachings, false doctrines, and destroying the body of Christ when we should be building it up and not destroying. And we need to wake the body up so when people are doing this, don't fall in league and go into these occults. Stay away from them. If they're preaching hate, if they're praying out curses, if they're wanting people to die, that's not of the ministry. That is not in any of these five ministries, nor in the nine gifts of the Spirit. They're not there. They're teaching falsity, anger, bitterness, and hate, which comes from Satan. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourself, but rather give peace unto wrath. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will pray, repay, saith the Lord. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirsts, gives him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt Heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. So, when somebody comes and they write threatening stuff to you, and they proclaim, like this one person, the tenth of this month, People were going to die because they blasphemed the holy ministry of somebody. No, we don't blaspheme that ministry for it's not holy. It is destroying the body of Christ. And you need to be warned not to go to these ministries like Almighty Wind, like um, uh, 
the, the Bible is the mark of the beast. Uh, there, there, there's some more on this channel, on YouTube, that go after people <clears throat> and curse them and pray curses and death upon them. Some, one man claims he's an angel, Michael. I, I'm sorry, people. Michael, an angel which is in heaven, not, reco not reincarnated in man, or nor is a man walking this earth. I simply have to say this. Michael is in heaven. He is preparing for a great war with Satan that will be totally kicked out of heaven soon cast down to earth with his angels, which will give power to the beast during the time of the mark of the beast. He's up there, and he is the protector over Israel. In Daniel, in the last chapter, it plainly puts that he is the protector of the Israel. So anyone that claims that they are an angel embodied here on earth, you are a liar. And I rebuke you. You're a liar. The only angel that you have in you would have to be a demon. And they can come in disguised as an angel of light. But they're not. And I have to tell you that, people, because it is required to protect the body of Christ, to protect those ones in the body, that they will become one with Him and no other. We are required. We are given ministries to edify, promote, and build up the body of Christ and not tear it down. And if we see anything or anyone coming out proclaiming things that are unholy and unrighteous, we, as ministers of God, whether we be an apostle, a prophet, or evangelist, or a pastor, or teacher, we must speak out and warn you, do not be deceived by these people. You must understand Satan has his people here on earth to deceive and to tear apart the body of Christ. Try to take out those that are called out. Try to keep you from being chose to be part of the body of Christ. So you must submit yourself to him. Jesus Christ, Yeshua, the only begotten Son of God that He sent to become that Lamb, to become sacrificed for our blood, with His blood to be our covenant between us and God. When people put themselves above others there they are Nicolotians these kind of people and it says in revelations that God has somewhat against one of the churches go over in there and one of well maybe I should do it because sometimes people go well tell me Barbara tell me where to go tell me tell me so, okay let me see let me tell you we go over here to Revelations, into the churches. We have a Jezebel in there, which he's not happy with at all. Um, let's see. Okay, let me see. I know it's here somewhere. Um, hmm. Not in that church. 
Um, let me see. I will find it. I will find it because um, okay, a few setters, clothes, white raiments, blot out the name, okay, um, hmm. Well, Father, help me find it. Let my eyes read where you want me to read. Okay. Somewhat and quickly I will remove... Oh, Nicolotians. It's in the Church of Ephesians. Very holy church. But they have fallen. Let's read it to you. And unto the church... Angel of the church of Ephesians, write these things, saith he, he that holdeth his seven stars in the right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. I know thy works and thy labor and thy practice, how thou can, canst not bear them which are, are evil, and that has tried them that which say they are apostles and are not, and has found them liars. And that's what we are doing today. There are many that are calling themselves apostles and prophets, and they are liars. And has born and has practiced, for my name's sake, has labored and has not fainted. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen, repent. Do the first works, or else I will come into thee quickly, and will remove thy candlestick out of thy place, except thou repent. But this thou hast, that thou hatest the deeds of the Nicolotians, which I also hate. The Nicolotians is a group uh, in the church that has built themselves up greater than anyone else. I'm an apostle, I'm a prophet, I am this, I am that, and you have to come to me. They have set themselves aside and brought themselves above normal human beings. They are gr love greater than anyone else, and God speaks only to them, and if you don't receive their word in their ministry, you're lost and doomed for hell. That's a lie. And there's, and I am telling you, come out from them type of people. For their candlesticks will be taken away from them. If he took the angels that rebelled against him and cast them down, what more do you think he will do to those that have taken the holy ministries that he has given to the body to edify the body, polluted them, and tearing down the body. Seek him. Seek him. And, and you seek with diligently the ministry that he has called you in. And you do the work that he's called you in Sacrificing your body to do His work to edify the body of Christ. To build people up. To bring them into that holiness, that righteousness of Him. Not tearing down. Not claiming they're the Almighty One that has been sent here. There's only one that has been sent here that we have to come to to receive the gift of God and that is Jesus Christ Yeshua HaMashiach I cannot give it to you because I did not die on that cross though I may be called a prof called to that ministry of prophecy I am not better than you are I'm not I am simply a vessel of God to do His holy work, to evangelize the world of His love, His awesome gift that He has given all of us 
not one, or just a few, but all of us, if we come to Him, accept His holy gift, and become part of the body, sacrificing this fleshly body, casting off the world and the desires of the world, become humble before Him and a servant to the body of Christ. That's who we are. That's who Jesus said he was. I'm a servant. I come as a servant. And he come as that lamb to be sacrificed on the Passover, the Passover lamb that was sacrificed for us, that we will receive that gift from God, that covenant under his blood. We are no more or no less than any other part of the body. And those that are weak, we need to take to our heart and build them up and give them the strength to walk in His holy righteousness. Not to tear them down or cast them down, but to build them up. Father, in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, I put this video out to the edification of the body of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ. Put it forth that people will come to know your true gift and your true covenant that you have placed. That we will become one in the body doing the ministry, these five ministries that you are given throughout mankind, the body of Christ, that we will edify the body and build it up that these gifts, these nine gifts that you have given us, that you have given to us to work in the wisdom of you and in your truth and in your righteousness to edify the body, that we will grow, for your soon coming is nigh. I know, Yeshua, that we will see you soon, and the body has to be prepared to become one with you for you are the head and we are the body bless us in your holy name in the name of yeshua hamashiach amen and amen